My dearly beloved in Christ, you know that today is called Laetare Sunday from the first word of the entrite, and it is similar to a Sunday we have during Advent called Gaudete Sunday. On both of these occasions, in the midst of a penitential season, the organ may be played at Mass, we're permitted to have flowers on the altar, the priest is permitted to wear the rose-colored vestments, and the theme is joy. Holy Mother Church wants to remind us that even during a penitential season, we ought to experience joy, the joy of loving and serving God. In general, Almighty God desires that we experience at least a modicum of joy in this life, even though we call it a veil of tears and we have crosses. We'll never have perfect peace and happiness in this world because we were not made for this world, but for heaven. But nevertheless, we seek joy. And one of the things that gives us joy is the beauty in the world and the beautiful things with which we surround our lives. And I would like to speak a little bit about art in particular and the beauty that we seek and that we enjoy, that brings uh, pleasure to our minds. We gaze at God's beautiful creation, the the mountains, the hills, the rivers, the lakes, the trees, the flowers in the springtime, the green grass, even the snow in winter. We say it's beautiful because it's a reflection of the creator who made it. God himself is supreme goodness, truth, and beauty. And we see reflections of God in his creation. We long for truth. We want to know the truth. We love goodness, and we appreciate when we see goodness on the part of our fellow human beings, and we seek to emulate that goodness of Almighty God and by performing kindness towards our neighbor. And finally, we seek beauty. We enjoy beauty, and in fact, we surround ourselves with beauty. Even the way you arrange the furniture in your home, you do it for a reason, because you enjoy the order. You are concerned maybe with the landscaping, the color we paint our houses. All of this indicates that we seek beauty. And particularly, we see this beauty in art. Now, when we speak of art, I'm not merely speaking about, say, painting or sculpture. Those are just a couple of the mediums that art uses to express beauty. We can talk about music, poetry, and many other ways of producing artwork. But why do we do it and why do we seek it? Why do we enjoy it? Because again, it is enjoyable. And we have that desire to seek this beauty. There's the old saying, you know, uh, that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There are different tastes, but we all can agree in general, that something is beautiful or it is the opposite. It is ugly. It is lacking in beauty. And I will apply this in a, in a few minutes to the modern church, the conciliar church, the church of Vatican II, where after Vatican II, all of a sudden, ugliness came into the churches. Uh, the beautiful statues began to disappear. And the new churches that have been built since Vatican II are for the most part empty, ugly, bare, and not pleasing to the eye, not uplifting. But go to Europe. Go to Europe, and where do all the tourists flock? They go to the Catholic churches. They go to the magnificent basilicas and cathedrals that were built from the love and devotion of the people for God's honor and glory. And we see this beauty, again, in our Catholic history and culture, something we can be proud of. Other uh, aspects of art would be music. We know when we hear music in the church, Catholic music, how beautiful it is, and how uplifting it can be, how pleasing it is to the ear, how much we appreciate it. We also enjoy non-religious music, if it is good music. 
But again, look at what has happened, especially beginning in the 1960s with regards to music. The modern music, which is not so uplifting and beautiful. And what, what does music have that makes it what it is? It has melody, maybe a harmony, which are other notes that blend with the melody to, pr to provide a beautiful sound. And it has a rhythm to provide the order, uh, the cadence for the music. And what happened with modern music is that the rhythm became overemphasized. The melody was de-emphasized, and now it's the strong beat, the strong rhythm, which is more something that excites the passions than is pleasing to the higher level of the mind. And then also you have the lyrics, so often in modern music, which are banal and which are oftentimes even suggestive of sin. So we have to be very careful in our choice of art in the areas of, of music and any other form of artwork. But let's talk about sacred art, the type of art that would be used in churches. Beginning before Vatican II, new forms of art came into vogue, what we would call modern art, and this concerned the popes. The popes, of course, who are always the guardians of the truth, the guardians of the piety and devotion of the faithful, had to be concerned. And so we see Pope Pius XI in 1932 at uh, the event of a dedication of a new picture gallery in the Vatican in uh, October of 1932 talked about the proper principles of art and warned against modern art. Then 15 years later, Pope Pius XII issued an encyclical on the liturgy and spent a little bit of time in that encyclical talking about the proper art in the church. And finally, in 1952, the Holy Office under Pope Pius XII issued a uh, document outlining very clearly for the bishops the type of art that should be permitted and the type of art that should be excluded. And I would like to read a little bit from that uh, document. The function and duty of sacred art, as its very name implies, is to enhance the beauty of the house of God and to foster the faith and piety of those who gather in the church to assist at divine services and implore heavenly favors. Hence, sacred art has always been cultivated by the church with assiduous care and vigilant interest in order that it may be thoroughly true to its own proper laws, which stem from supernatural doctrine and true asceticism, and so give it a perfect right to call itself sacred. Hence the words which the Supreme Pontiff, St. Pius X, spoke when promulgating the wise norms concerning sacred music that are quite appropriate here. Quote, and again, this is this document quoting from Pope Pius X back in 1903, his uh, apostolic constitution on sacred music. Nothing, therefore, should have place in the church which disturbs or even merely diminishes the piety and devotion of the faithful. Nothing which could be a reasonable ground for offense or scandal. Nothing above all which is unworthy of the house of prayer and the majesty of God. The document goes on, and I won't quote it at any great length, but it mentions here the objection that some will say, well, you know, as time goes on, there are new forms of art or new styles, and we have to adapt to the changing times. Of course, that's something that was drummed into us back at the time of Vatican II. You have to adapt, etc. So what does the document here from 1952 say about that? The objection raised by some that sacred art must be adapted to the needs and circumstances of changing times is of no weight. For sacred art, which originated with Christian society, has its own ends, from which it can never diverge, and its proper function, which it can never abandon. So if true art 
Sacred art, we're talking about religious art, is based upon doctrine, and doctrine never changes. So therefore, the art must still always follow basic principles to be good and worthy art. And finally, this document of the Holy Office quotes from the encyclical on the sacred liturgy of Pope Pius XII, written in 1947, quote, it is eminently fitting that the art of our times have a free opportunity to serve the sacred edifices and sacred rites with due reverence and with due honor, so that it too may add its voice to the magnificent hymn of glory which men of high talent have sung throughout the passing centuries of the Catholic faith. Nevertheless, in consciousness of our office, we cannot but deplore and reprove those images and forms recently introduced by some, which seem to be deformations and debasements of sane art, and which at times are even in open contradiction to Christian grace, modesty, and piety, and miserably offend true religious sentiment. These indeed are to be totally excluded and expelled from our churches, as in general, whatever is out of harmony with the holiness of the place. So you can see the wise solicitude of the popes here regarding art. And we have to be careful because just because something can be obtained from a catalog or in a religious goods store that advertises itself as Catholic art, you have to be careful because there is so much modern art that is uninspiring and can even be detrimental to doctrine and certainly to our piety. So we want to follow and adhere to the guidelines the church has given to appreciate the patrimony that we have from centuries gone by of all of the beautiful artwork. And of course, as we strive to surround ourselves by beautiful things in our homes, you put a picture on the wall. Well, why? You choose what you put up because it is pleasing. It is artistic. And we use these things because they give joy to our lives. God, the source of all beauty, wants us to experience joy in this life that we might above all seek to be happy with him forever in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.